you're not qualified for, the, the girl you don't think you can get, whatever the case, you've got to go for it. Um, and that's the lesson that I took away from that, and I've always um, never taken no for an answer. And that was, it, it was a huge lesson, and then it, you know, I wanted to start my own business after that, and he had written me a nice note and said, you know, I, I wish you much success, Donald J. Trump, and it was in the room waiting. And so when we checked out, I left him a note saying, you know, thank you and all those good things. And I said, keep watching because I want to be the next Donald Trump. And then I started my own business and just right. from there. And you actually wrote a review for your last book, too. Yeah, exactly. So when my book came out, um, I sent him a copy of the manuscript, and I'd already sold it to one of the big four publishers. And I said, dear Mr. Trump, now it was typed. It wasn't on you know, notebook paper. <laughs> and now I knew how to get a hold of him, too. I knew the correct address, and I knew his assistant. I knew a lot of things. And I said, uh, dear Mr. Trump, you may not remember this, but 13 years ago I wrote you a letter, and this is what I've done in the past 13 years. And, uh, yeah, he wrote, he wrote a really nice endorsement. He offered to write the foreword, and uh, I had lunch with him uh, Sometime last year, and he's, he's been a nice guy, very supportive. So not everybody's going to write a letter with Donald Trump. That's what I said, yeah. Exactly. Every eight year old kid in America, when I tell that story, I'm sure it's. He sold the hotel, though, so he won't be able to hook you up there. Um, Even the Trump Tower or something. But. Yeah, exactly. So after that, I'm just kind of tracking your, your history here. So what happened after that? I know you have some involved in your beanie babies. So this is another reason why I kept all my business close to my chest, so that my friends couldn't judge that I was selling beanie babies when I was uh, 11 or 12 years old. So I had this printing business for a couple years. I was making, you know, a few hundred dollars a month, not a huge amount of money, but to a 9, 10, 11 year old, that is a huge amount of money. Um, and I then realized that these beanie babies were a huge craze. And this might be like when you guys were really young, because um, some of you are probably my sister's age, and uh, that was the age when I was able to take advantage of her. So you're probably um, her friends <laughs> and age. Um, but what happened was my sister had 30 Beanie Babies, and she was six years old, and I was almost 12. And, you know, they just sit there. They don't do anything. And I saw on a news story that they were really popular, and this new website had just started called eBay. This was 1995. And so I went on eBay to see what these Beanie Babies that my sister had were worth, and it turned out they were worth, like, a lot of money. And like, keep in mind, he was only how old? I was 11. You were 11. Yeah. And so, so I realized these Beanie Babies were worth a lot of money, so I offered my sister $100 to buy them. So fair and square, I paid for them. Um, I paid her $100, and $100 to a six-year-old is like a million. You know, she doesn't know. And I immediately put them on eBay, and five days later, they sold for $1,000. So I was happy to get 900 She was happy to get 100 um, my biggest problem though now is I'm out of Beanie Babies. So I got two options. I can get Claire to go to mom and dad to ask for more Beanie Babies and then I'll just buy them from her. <laughs> or what I, what I did this time was since I now have a computer and the internet, I went on and I looked up the company that made Beanie Babies, um, TY Incorporated in Oak Brook, Illinois, and I looked up their address. And then I went on to Yahoo, because this is pre-Google, and I said sample professional letter. I had never written a professional letter. I was in you know fifth grade, sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And so I sample professional letter, you put your name and address, you put the name and address to whom you're writing to. If you don't know somebody's name, just put to whom it may concern. That's like a wild card. So I put to whom it may concern. My name is Cameron Johnson. I'm the president of Cheers and Tears Printing Company. We are interested in selling your Beanie Babies over the internet. Please send more information. And then I signed my name. But the letter was printed, the envelope was printed. You would have never known it was written by an eight-year-old. And my, or I'm sorry, an 11 year old. And my justification for that was if I was 42, I wouldn't be telling them I'm 42. So why do they need to know I'm 11? So I fire off this letter and basically two weeks later an order form comes back and I can now buy Beanie Babies wholesale. Um, and so I never told my, my parents, but um, I, at that point I got my first checking account when I was 10 years old. So I already had my own money. Um, I reminded my mom every month when my bank statement came that it's illegal to open my mail. Um, so, I mean, it was totally, everything was very close. I was very secretive. And so I knew that I had probably, you know, $2,500 saved up. And a 1,000 Beanie Babies was the minimum order at $2.50 a piece. So it was basically going to deplete my entire savings. But I realized, hey, you know, I don't have a mortgage to pay. I don't have a car. I don't have a wife. I'm 11. I can make it back. Um, you know, I'm not going off a cliff here. Um, I'm going to order a thousand Beanie Babies. And my biggest fear is, um, without telling my parents, they're going to like turn away the delivery, like the UPS man or something, because they still don't even know I sold my sister's collection. They're way behind. So um, I come home from school one day, and I open the door, and I'm walking in the house, and my mom says, what have you done? And I was like, you know, I'm 
not going to incriminate myself on something. So I said, what do you mean? And she said, what have you ordered? And I was like, oh, those are Beanie Babies. And a thousand Beanie Babies takes up probably half the stage. <laughs> and I was like, great, it came. And she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm now in the Beanie Baby business. I'm not printing anything anymore. Because I, if I can make $900 in five days, and I'm used to making $20 per group of invitations, I need to be in the Beanie Baby business. So um, I listed the first thousand on, e on eBay, and I sold them in just a matter of weeks, and then I ordered two thousand, and then I ordered three thousand, and then it got to the point where I was stocking five thousand Beanie Babies in a closet in my parents' basement, and my dad is charging me seventy-five dollars a month rent for the closet. <laughs> uh, and every day when I came home from school, I would have all the orders that I taped up the night before, you know, at one in the morning. My mom would drive me to the post office on my way to soccer practice. So I would go into the, the post office every day in cleats and shin guards, and I would pay, and I had my checkbook, so I could just write a check for the postage, and I could deposit all the checks from people mailing me money. Um, and it was just this cycle, and every day I was shipping 40 orders. And at the end of that year, I had made $50,000 uh, before uh, you know, I turned 13, I was 12. And I made $50,000 selling Beanie Babies over the Internet. After that. So after that, I basically realized that I'm in middle school, and if anybody finds out that I'm selling Beanie Babies, then my reputation is going to go, you know, in the trash. So I need to get out of the Beanie Baby business, one, because um, I'm tired of going to the post office every day, I'm tired of boxing up Beanie Babies every single night at one in the morning, nobody knows about this, none of my friends or anything. Um, and so I was just tired of all that. I wanted to create a business where I didn't have to stock inventory. You know, having 5,000 Beanie Babies at $2.50 a piece, I got $10,000 in real money tied up in my parents' closet. So I didn't want to ship anything, ship anything anymore, so I started a, an email forwarding service that was paid for by advertising. Um, that was the first time I hired someone when I was 13, and I hired someone for $3,500, and I never told them my age because I thought they'd take advantage of me um, and, or not take me seriously. It was always one of the two. So I only used my age when it would help me get free media exposure for my business, and I never used my age, and credibility, and I never used my age um, when I wanted to be taken more seriously. Right. And then the next couple of years were big for you, too. You wrote your own book. Uh, you went over to Tokyo. So when I, after my easy mail, I started a company um, basically that would pay you to look at advertisements. So uh, most of you in this room are probably on Facebook. Most of you in this room use Google. Anytime you do a search on Google, obviously companies pay to advertise on the right side. Anytime you're stalking your friend's photos on Facebook, people are paying to send you targeted advertisements, and probably no one in this room clicks those advertisements. What we did was we basically paid you a percentage of that ad revenue. So if I was, you know, if my service was Facebook today or Google today, you would get paid to use it based on the targeted ads that we sent you. So if you go to barnesandnoble.com, we're going to send you an Amazon ad. If you go to Dell.com, we're going to send you a Hewlett Packard ad. So companies would pay us a lot of money because we could send you targeted advertisements. You would download the software program, um, and it would rotate advertisements on your screen. When you sign up, you can tell 20 of your friends, and now you get 10% of what all of your friends make from looking at these ads. And so that company is called Surfing Prizes, and we grew virally, and we had 200,000 customers uh, in 60 countries. And we were generating uh, 15 million advertisements a day, which is $15,000 a day in revenue. So I was in the ninth grade getting checks in the mail for 100 grand a week. And um, I, there was a news article written about me in the Japanese equivalent of the Wall Street Journal. And then the CEO of this Japanese-based company emailed me and offered to hire me and bring, him, bring me on as a board member. So I started working in Japan when I was 15. And then I actually didn't write the book. Um, I had a, a best-selling author in Japan approach me who wanted to ghostwrite my autobiography. So I had a biography book called 15 Year Old CEO that came out in Japan um, and I was spending a lot of time in, in Tokyo. And, right. um, so how did you neat. manage all that because you're in high school and obviously you want to do your studies and then you have a social life. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean the more successful that the business became obviously the less interested I was in my studies right. because I realized that you know. Those other priorities. Yeah exactly. If I've got a test on